Thank you, thank you, Zach. I, I always love, you know, when I get the lunch crowd because everybody needs a place to sit anyway, so it looks like everybody's really here to listen to me. So it's kind of nice that way. So uh, yes, uh, John Blackman, I'm a Chief Technology Officer and Co-Founder of Trivantis. Uh, if you ever want, if you see, want to see anything that we show here today, we're over at booth 116. I always want to start with that because I usually forget to say it later in the presentation. So uh, VR, it's really immersive learning. We try, to, we try to categorize it as immersive learning. So it's always good to start out defining what you're going to talk about. So you know, what is immersive learning? So it's, it's actually putting users into the environment and simulating the environment you're in. So we've all been working on simulation for years in, in all the training we create, right? It's a very common way to create. We have actually found it's a good way to do things. Simulate the environment. Well, in VR, it is pure simulation. You are in the environment. You are replicating a real life scenario. It's also microlearning in action. So another thing, we've been talking about microlearning for about a decade now, and we all still create hour long courses. You know you do, uh, but now, not, not anymore. In VR, you're creating short bursts, right? Five minutes, 10 minutes maybe at max. It really is micro learning. It's meant to be micro learning. Most importantly, it's learning by doing. So you actually do it, you perform the task, virtually performing the task, but you learn by doing. So uh, Zach mentioned before, a lot of buzz, a lot of people talking about it. Why? Why is everybody talking about it? You know, what is it, what's going on? First and foremost, attention rate. So, I'm up here giving this speech, the people in the back row, they're already starting to get glazed over back there, right? Uh, but with immersive learning, you put that headset on, it's 100% attention rate. They are, they have nothing else to look at, trust me, they're paying attention, they're in there, you get their attention. It's also retention rate. So we talked about learning by doing. So when you actually do something, you learn it in a different way. Your brain stores it in a different area of the brain. And you can think of that like driving a car. So when you go drive a car, when you are the driver and you drive there, you always remember how to get back there, right? We always do. But if you're sitting two feet away in the passenger seat, you never remembered how to get there. Even if you've been driven there two or three times, you're really not sure of how to get there. And that is the difference in how your brain stores it. You perceived and viewed it in one side and you did it in the other side. Your brain stores it differently. This uh, mentions a uh, study. This is a study done at Miami Children's Hospital. Uh, they did a study on VR. They did train two groups, one on VR and one on uh, tra using traditional training. And then uh, after a week, after a month, after a year, they did uh, retention rates on those. And they found that the people who were trained in VR had an 80% retention rate after a year. They still remembered the materials because they learned it by doing. The people who did traditional training had a 20% retention rate in a week. Okay, so not even comparable. Learning by doing is what it's about. Uh, the engagement rate. So uh, traditionally when you do uh, VR learning, and if there is such a thing as traditional with VR, uh, you gamify it. You make it fun. You give them a reason to go in there. You make it a little bit fun. You, you have them do things, pick up things, do things. That, that gets people engaged. You get them into it. They want to do it again. And when was the last time you had somebody want to take one of your courses twice, right? And most importantly, and this is the mantra we use, the freedom to fail. Mistakes made in virtual reality are not mistakes made in reality, and that's the important point. You give them a chance to go in there and try it and fail as many times as they want. Uh, customer service is an excellent example. Let, the, let that guy go in there and make the wrong answer five times before he gets it right. But he's gonna remember the right answer because he was in front of somebody, he was in that same situation, he was talking to somebody, and he chose the right answer, and that'll stick in his mind, he'll remember it. So a lot of people uh, ask the question, well, VR is great, but you know, what do I use it for? How am I going to use it? You know, most people think of you know, physical or me mechanical or, or shop floor kind of things. Well, there are a lot of use cases for it, right? Situational simulations are the best. And here's that one for Chick-fil-A I talked about. Chick-fil-A is actually using it for uh, customer service training. Uh, it's very popular. It works very well. Onboarding is one that surprised me. I didn't really expect it, but uh, it happens a lot. Uh, this is an example of Service Titan. Uh, they have a, uh, a good problem to have. They have a lot of growth going on, and they have a lot of new people coming in. They also have a lot of people going out as well. Uh, and they're finding that people never really got engaged in the office or got to meet the people. So they actually created VR onboarding. So before you actually start on the company, you take a VR course. You go through, you see the entire office, you see everywhere you sit, you find out what happens there, and you meet the people, and they use the actual people in the office in the videos. It's not hard to do. You just have people stand up and tell you what they do. You get introduced to the people. When they first step in there the first day, they already know all the key people in the office. They feel like they've been there. They walk into a room, I've been here before. They know what they're doing. 
uh, equipment operation. And this is one that's a bit more traditional that you would think of. Things like healthcare, manufacturing, energy, retail, food production. Those are things where it makes sense to have a situational simulation in there. You want to be in the situation. You want to be in the area where you're working with. Make your mistake there first before you go out on a million dollar machine and break the machine. So obviously it makes sense here. The example we're showing at the top is uh, uh, used by the Vanderbilt School of Nursing. So uh, Vanderbilt had a bit of a problem. They have every nurse has to be trained up uh, on a machine that costs $1.2 million for each machine. They have one of them and every one of their students needs to go through it. In order to get proficient on the machine, the students were up all night, they had to the slot times, figure it out, just didn't have enough time to put people through it. They've now created VR training for that. All the nurses go through it on VR first. They only test, the first time they touch the equipment is when they're testing on it. And guess what? They have higher pass rates now and more people get able to get through because of VR training. Uh, safety inspection security, again, this is a great one. Uh, sanitary inspection, theft prevention, threat recognition. So you can imagine that's a pretty popular one in today's world, unfortunately. Uh, but to be able to recognize a threat, what is a threatening situation? Who should I look at? What should I look at? Security is a big part of this, and, uh, and even bigger, unfortunately, in today's world. So another question that uh, pops up for a lot of people is, how do I experience uh, VR? You know, we, we all, you know, we, we've seen Rift, we've seen the, uh, the glasses and, and all, but there are actually a lot of ways you can experience it. So it's not just that way. So the first way and the simplest way, because it's, most, it's more familiar to all of us, is interactive 360 video. So definitely the simplest method. You can actually produce content that is VR content. You can run it inside of your LMS and take it on a web browser. You just use the mouse to pan around within there. If it's a touch screen, you can use the touch to pan around within there. You can select using the mouse or the touch. Uh, you do get some level of immersion. It's not, it's not pure immersion, but you do get some immersion. It's better than flat 2D content for situational simulations. Uh, and you know, users already have these computers. You don't have to buy anybody anything. They can use it right now. You already have a, if you're sitting here, you already have a distribution method for this right now. It works. The only, the only downside of it, it is, it's, it's not as immersive. It, it is not quite the same, but it's a way to get it out. Second level of immersion is uh, through a, a, cardbo a cardboard headset and a smartphone. Uh, many of you may not be familiar with uh, cardboard. Uh, it's, it's not the material, it is the type of device. Uh, and what that is saying is you can use a, a, a standard smartphone, put it in a cardboard style uh, viewing device, and use the, car, the, the phone as the computer to view the VR. It's nice about that, it has a lot of pluses. Everybody already has their own smartphone, well not everybody, most people have their own smartphones. Almost everyone's smartphone that's, that's within the last two years can run VR. Uh, so there's not much investment on your part. You need cardboard uh, for the different people that are taking it. And you can actually brand those headsets. So we're actually giving those away in our booth. We have our brand, of course, but uh, uh, we have branded uh, headsets. They cost us $6.48. Uh, for each headset, and that's fully, car fully branded. Uh, you could actually brand these, give them out to your students, and that gives them an incentive to take a course. They would actually want to try it out and give it a and, and again, who wants to take a course, right? Most people, you go, oh, I have to take a course again, you know? Now you're actually giving them a reason to go take it. Hey, here, here's the, you know, and you can do it for like four or five dollars if you don't brand it. Here, take this and try it out with your phone. I guarantee you they're gonna be excited to try it. Uh, there are some downsides to cardboard. Uh, it, it, the quality of the, uh, the output depends on the user's smartphone. So if they don't have a great quality smartphone or if they have a super old smartphone, it may not work at all. So they, it really will depend on it. They usually will know somebody whose smartphone they can go through it on. Uh, and when you're in a cardboard set on a smartphone, it uses something called gaze to select. So you don't have a controller. There's no controller in there. So the way you select something is you actually stare at it for a certain period of time and that causes a selection. It's a little less immersive as well. I've, I've actually been very pleasantly surprised in how immersive it is. You usually can't expect a whole lot from a piece of cardboard or a piece of plastic and your phone. It's actually pretty good. I recommend you try it out. Uh, we have it running over there. You can, uh, you can get them anywhere. It's actually not too bad. Okay, the next level, level up from there, is uh, dedicated smartphone VR goggles. So there's a, a couple of them out there. Uh, they have excellent immersion, right? So the Daydream headset uh, and the, the Galaxy Gear VR fantastic immersion, they work, as well as uh, many of the other options. Uh, the problem with them is now they, they, were the, they were the ones who kind of started this revolution, uh, but there are now better options that are less expensive. So it's I, I, not really something I recommend. We support uh, the, the Samsung because there's a lot of them out there. 
Uh, but not really that it, it's limited to a very, you have to have, so yes, the headset may only be $100, but you have to have a Samsung, a $900 Samsung phone to put in there to make it work. So it's actually $1,000 to get into that. Same with the Google, you have to have a Pixel phone to go in there. So there's, there's a lot of things. So it's, it's kind, of been, kind of been outdated by the next option, which is the standalone VR headsets. So these are coming out now. They're out or coming out now. There's one coming out from HTC uh, next month uh, that's really good as well. Uh, very immersive. Uh, excellent. They really bring you into the scenario. You feel like you're there. You feel like you're doing, you have a controller. You can utilize a controller to select, grab, do things with. Uh, it's very immersive. You don't need an extra smartphone. You don't need a laptop. It's not connected to anything. Uh, don't need headphones. The headphones are all built into them, most of them. I believe this one on the bottom, actually, you have to have headphones on. Uh, there are some cons to it. I mean, it is more expensive. So if you're going to outfit an entire class, that's $200 a pop to put it in. So it's a little bit different as opposed to $5 a pop. So you have to uh, look how you're doing it. We, we actually have uh, some uh, larger customers that are now kind of staging their VR distribution. So at some of their center, for everyone, you can view it on the web, but at their uh, some of their uh, satellite centers, they, they pass out cardboards, and at their main hubs, they have Oculus Go's for everyone to use so they can experience it in full VR. But those are shared. They don't get, actually do their own. So it depends on how you want to view it. The final one is the connected VR headset. Make, make no doubt about it, that is the best way to view VR. It is a pain to set up. It took me half an hour once again to get it set up this morning in the booth. But we have it set up and running over there right now. We have a Rift over there. You can get it in and try it. Uh, but it is absolutely the highest level of immersion. You will not believe how good it is. If you haven't tried it, come on over to Booth 116, give it a shot. A lot of cons there. It's very expensive. The device itself is actually not. Uh, a Rift and a Rift is now 400 to Vive, I think, is a little more than that. Uh, but it requires a very high-end PC to work with. So the PC is that's where your expense is going to be. Uh, you may think you have a high-end PC. You probably don't have one high-end enough to work with this. Trust me. Uh, and uh, it also is connected by wire. So you literally have a physical wire from this onto the PC. So it's a, it's, a, it's a little bulky. You actually have these standalone stanchions at the end that are detecting your movement with your controllers. So a lot of setup, a lot of do it. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna put one you know, booth that people are gonna go in, that's the way to go. I and mean, that's what we did for our booth as well because it really is an amazing level of immersion. So the other thing you think about is distribution. How do I get content out? I've created all this cool stuff. I, I know how I can use it. How do I get it out? How do I deliver it to people, right? So uh, you can host it on Scenario VR. So if you create content on Scenario VR, Scenario VR is also a hosting platform. So you publish it out. It publishes onto the web. We have apps for all the major devices. Uh, and those apps allow you to download the content. So you publish it, you assign it to users, it automatically gets assigned to them. When they log into their system on the headset, they see what's assigned to them, they download it, and they run it locally off the device. So we handle that distribution method for you. So we can handle it, we can handle it in full VR. It's all done for you. We also have something called public hosting. So let's say you want to have, and this is actually very common, you have a 360 walkthrough of uh, of some of your public material, or you have a tour of, of your home, or if you have a new product and you want to do a 360 walk around of that product, whatever it may be, you want that in the public. You don't want to keep that behind a firewall. We actually have public hosting, so you can put it on a public site, and anyone for free can get a, a viewer license to Scenario VR and go in and view it. And they actually don't even, in truth, they don't even need a Scenario VR license. You can just put the link to it in HTML and they can link directly to it. So th that's all possible by hosting on Scenario VR. In addition to that, we have other ways you can get things out of there. All of our other options are available uh, to publish, and those all create zip manifest files which you download and put wherever you want. So if you want to put it on your LMS, you can publish to SCORM, uh, 1.2, 2004, CMI5, or XAPI, and host it anywhere you want. It will work. You can host it on your website. We also will publish out a complete uh, runnable file that is standalone uh, by itself, which will publish out to HTML5. It has all the runtime built into WebVR built into it. It's a zip file. You can put that package anywhere and run it. You can host it on your website. You can put it anywhere. You can also embed it in traditional web courses. So many of you uh, uh, probably use something like Lectora, Captivate, Storyline, Domino, things like that. Fantastic. One of the things we've done here is try to be uh, try to work with everyone. So. Uh, you can take that output uh, and, and use it in any one of those uh, authoring tools. It goes in as an iframe, as a web window, if you will, into any of those authoring tools. So 
let's say you have a, a, a pretty standard course, but it would benefit from having a little immersion, a little something inside the course, you can actually embed a little immersive piece on one of your pages in there. So the entire scenario thing would go onto one page within your course in that thing. So lots of different ways to distribute it. And this is what I think is probably most important. How do I analyze it? How do I know what they're doing inside of there? Very, very important, right? So <clears throat> scenario VR content is natively XAPI. Everything you do without even doing anything is an XAPI. So uh, when we publish, every, uh, we've hooked everything that is done within there and track it via XAPI. So if you publish on, and host it on scenario VR, we actually have an LRS. We've partnered with Yet Analytics, which is over there. Uh, and, and as a part of the price of our product, you get all the analytics built in. So we have full reporting on there. Uh, you, you find out not only you know, what they did, what they clicked on, how long it took them to click. If, they, if you popped up a question, you know what they answered. You can compare that to what everyone else answered. But you also know how long it took them to answer that. So if they had to think about it for a while, what did they do? Which path did they take through this scenario? At which, you know, usually in VR, you don't have a prescriptive path. You, you allow them to, to go in any direction they want. You're allowing them, giving them freedom to explore. How did they explore it? These are all things you want to know. How much total time did they take? How many interactions did they click on? Did they actually click on everything? Every, all of that is tracked for you and, and put in there. However, if you want, you can also publish the XAPI and take it off our system. If you have your own LRS, you can output to that LRS as well. We allow all of that with Scenario VR, so lots of tracking. All right, that sounds really great, but you probably want to see what it is now. At this time, I've been talking about it for a while, so let's take a look. Okay, so this is uh, the interface of Scenario VR. Scenario VR is a SaaS-based tool. It's all on the web. Uh, this is the author interface. Uh, so card-based, you know, standard modern interface. All of these are the scenarios that are my scenarios that I edit. These are the ones that I am, I am working on. So uh, in here, you see uh, all of these here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly run through uh, one of the tours, and then I'm actually going to build that tour live on stage over this awful Wi-Fi that we have here as a testament to how good it is. So we're going to do that. So here is the, here is the tour. Uh, and so what this is is a tour of our office. It's actually not our office anymore. Uh, we did go to another office. Uh, within the editor, you see it's a, a 360 view of this image. So if I run it, we first have a video. You're not getting any audio right now, but she's describing to you what is uh, what is going on. You're going to have a tour. She's going to do a few things and point around, but in the end, you click on it and enter into the office. So once you get in the office, uh, your object is to look around. You're supposed to uh, be familiar with the office. Click on this, and you're supposed to know that that server room door is open. You're not supposed to do that. That automatically goes up and down. There's me, actually, walking by. Uh, yes. Some people ask, well, is that an image or a video? So this is a software development office. We don't move much. We just kind of sit around. So that's us. We're, we're just not doing a lot. Uh, and then you click this to go to the kitchen. We navigate into the kitchen. Once inside of the kitchen, uh, we go through. You select this, and we answer a question. We look at a circuit breaker panel. This is actually based off an office safety course we did. Uh, it's just a small clipped version of it. And you ask him a question. You say, what is the safety violation here? Uh, and the actual correct answer is there are no meaningful labels. And it switches them back out to the kitchen. So very short scenario. Uh, just gives you an introduction to uh, the office lets you walk through. OK, how will we go about building that? All right. So uh, we're going to start by uh, dragging this window over here so I can work with it. All right. So we're going to start by saying create scenario. So we click on this little plus button. So you're at the dashboard. Just hover over the plus button. We have create scenario. We also have the if you have exported scenarios, you can import it. Anything you publish out, you can bring back in. The publish is a full copy of the scenario. So there's no more. As long as you have created your scenario, you're never going to lose your source code. It is the source code. What you publish is the source code. So that's kind of nice. So you click on Create Scenario. So we have that new VR scenario right here. So all right. So you actually do that by uh, going in. And we can do that via drag and drop. So I'm going to take this first image. This is an equirectangular video. Uh, so if we uh, looked at it, you would see it would look really weird because it would be very stretchy. Uh, and it would uh, look, but what it is, is that is the format that the 360 cameras take. So it is a square image that is meant to be stretched over a sphere. So it gives you that look. So if you look at it as a rectangle, it looks kind of funny. Uh, 
but it's an echo rectangular video. We know how to interpret it. We know how to map that to a sphere. So we give it to you in a sphere. OK, so it takes that and it puts it over here on the left-hand side. Uh, this is now our video. We can look around it and see everything in there. We can, uh, we can play it if we want to. This button is preview mode. We can drop it into preview mode. We can see our video. OK, so the video is in there. Uh, and if I remember correctly, we had one hotspot and we had it here. Uh, and that was just a standard hotspot. So we do that by clicking on plus. Plus is how we add things. We add a hotspot. So we have some built-in resources in here. So these are all the built-in hotspots. You can, of course, add your own. And we'll show an example of adding your own later. Uh, but I think on that one, we use the arrow up. Uh, the arrow up. And we're all set there. And we're going to place that over the door. So there's our hotspot. And we have a hotspot over a door. So let's go ahead and add in our other scenes here first so we can move in so we'll actually know what to do. So we have uh, several more scenes. We have the uh, electrical panel. So let me uh, actually put this over here so it makes more sense to drag. So you can see me dragging it. So first scene we're going to add is the front office scene. And you'll see when I, I, I click and add it on, it asks me what I want to do with it. Those are JPEGs. So a JPEG can be either a uh, hotspot, an image, or a scene. So you just have to know, hey, that's an echo rectangular. I want to know it's a scene. So I drag it over here on the scene area. So we drag that there, and it comes in as a scene. The next scene was the kitchen. So you see uh, the kitchen is an MP4, so it's either a video or a scene. In this case, I know it's a scene, so I add it to the scene list here. I drag it there. It becomes another scene. And again, the fact that that works over this Wi-Fi is a miracle to me when I do it. And the last scene is that electrical panel. So we're going to drag and drop that on. And that is another JPEG. So it could be an image, hotspot, or a scene. Again, it's going to be a scene because it's an echo rectangular. So I drop it on the scene area. It becomes a scene. OK. So now that we've got that, uh, we need to do a few things. So we've, we've got all our scenes in. Those are all four of our scenes. And we put this hotspot over the door here. Uh, now we need to do something on that hotspot. So the first thing we're going to do is add an action to the hotspot. So the action uh, is, a, is a, a simple link action, but there's a lot of things you can do. You can really gamify things within Scenario VR. So you can link to things. You can hide or show things, play or stop media. So that's MP3 audio or MP4 video. And those videos are videos that you actually, 2D videos you add to the scene. So you might want to add a little descriptive element. So let's say you're having a user work on a widget, and you want to show some more material about that widget that's in a 2D video. You actually bring in that 2D video, and we'll map it into the 3D world so it works within the sphere. And you actually put it anywhere on the sphere, and it will be on the sphere. You could actually put it in a TV on the wall. It'll look like the TV is playing on the wall. So lots of things you can do there. Uh, you can pause or play the scene. So you, have, you see there's a timeline at the bottom of the scene. You can put timed actions in as well. We're not going to do any here today. But you have timed actions. So you can do all of these actions you can do at any time as well. Uh, you can pause or play the current scene. So uh, generally, when you're asking a question, I like to pause the scene because it's not it's kind of distracting to have a video playing behind you as you're trying to answer a question. Uh, but it might be important, depending on what's happening. You can actually jump around to different times within the scene. You can pan to objects. You can actually have the camera pan to the object of interest. But be very careful when using that one. Uh, you can get someone nauseous when panning around too much. Small pans, good. Large pans, bad. And never. Have somebody, I, I literally just had this. I had someone send me one of theirs. They actually put uh, hot spots in a circle around their feet and pan people around. So you look down and pan. It made you fall. It was, a, it was an instant fall scenario. It's like, look, guys, you cannot do that. It's just, it's horrible. So there are some things you need to learn when you're doing VR. Uh, you also have uh, custom scoring. So there, scoring is automatic within VR. Uh, you can. Uh, if you put in 10 questions, each question will be worth 10 points. No problem. You don't have to do anything to make that happen. But if you want, you can do custom scoring. We have adding the score, setting score, lots of ways you can do things. So you can see you two points for a right answer, minus one for a wrong answer, whatever you want to do. You can actually even use the score as kind of a variable uh, because you can test the score conditionally and do things. And all the actions you had, you can do conditionally based upon the score. So we have things. We actually have an escape room built in VR. Uh, that's kind of fun. And we use that, that score as a variable all throughout to know where people are and what they're doing. Uh, and we also have the, the concept of completion. So because we uh, publish the SCORM, XAPI, CMI5, all those require completion. And because it's VR, it's not linear. 
and you should, let me tell you, you should never build it linear. Don't force a person down a path, let them explore. Uh, and so because of that, you need to be able to complete at any point. You don't know when they'll be done. They might go in this way or this way. Yeah, they get done somewhere along the way, but let them figure that out and then issue the complete and then we'll issue the complete to the LMS or whatever your tracking system is at that time. But back to what we were doing, this is a simple link action. So in this case, we're actually just going to link to another scene. So we keep it very visual. So you say, I want a link, which means I want to go somewhere. Uh, and we show you a pictures of the scenes. So in this case, we were just going to the front of the, if we remember uh, from the scenario we just looked at, we were just going to the front of the office. So we'll put that in. And that's it. And so now, when I go in there, that's going to link to the front of the, the, this scene here, the front office. OK, so now that we're in the front office, there were a few things in here. Uh, we had, uh, I believe we had a, uh, a text, uh, an info card, which is a text object, which reminds me I need to get that text up because I am definitely copying and pasting that, uh, that text in here. And uh, it's this text right here. One thing I've learned is never try to type while giving a demonstration. You never type correctly. So put it over here, copy and paste it. Much better. All right, so we had uh, an info card. So an info card is just text. Uh, so you actually copy and paste that text in or type it in if you want. You have lots of style options available here. Uh, so right now, this is not the style I want. I think I wanted a, actually, I like to square look to that. Uh, I think I had medium sized text, and I think I had not worried about that so much. I definitely did not have a green font, that's for sure. I'm not sure where that came from. I think I had white, and I prefer a gray card. So somebody was messing with my computer over there. So, but that's where I was. Uh, I think that looks like a lot nicer than that did a moment ago. Uh, so we had this info card here. We also had a hotspot. Uh, that hotspot, again, was one of our standard hotspots. Uh, and so for its image, I'm just going to use one of our standards. And I think it was an arrow left in that case. Uh, so we'll put that in. And that goes over here. Now, that actually just momentarily showed you one of the key things is smart guides. So we have smart guides available. One of the differences, you'll notice it's a spherical smart guide. That's actually on the outside of a sphere, not a rectangle. So you can actually see, oh, you can actually see the, uh, the spherical nature of it. And if you actually go all the way down to the bottom, you'll actually see most of the sphere down there. It's, it's kind of different. So a little bit different, but the things can line up with each other. It makes it very simple to line up with each other. You have pretty standard sizing, the same sizing you would expect. 2D rotation is in there as well, so you can rotate things any way you want. Uh, we tried to make the interface very PowerPoint-ish, if you will. In a, it's, in a, it's in a sphere, so it's not exactly the same, but as PowerPoint-ish as possible. Uh, and, we, and we're going to put an action on that. That's going to go somewhere. That's going to go to the kitchen. So we want to link that to the kitchen. Pretty simple to do. And let's place that right next to the door because that's actually where it is. We had one other thing on there. Uh, we had this star here. Uh, so that star is a hotspot, but that's a hotspot with a custom image. So that custom image is uh, yeah, it's over here. Darn windows, and it's wanting to snap everything out to the largest size. Uh, it's this star.png, so I'm just going to drag it onto here. Uploads it for me. And uh, now it's in my, in my scenario, and I have that star. And that is going to do, that's going to show that info card. It's going to show that text. But it's only going to show it for two seconds, so it's going to go away. It's going to show it and then have it go away. That's actually a very common thing within VR. It's a hint kind of thing. So we actually built that in naturally to have a duration for show. The durations happen for shows, hides, things like that. So and that reminds me that, uh, well, we're going to put that right over the server room. Uh, and th this actually should not be visible when we start out, right? So we start out, go into the room. It's not there. We show it based upon the star. It hides itself. We go to another room. So we've built that scene. So now we're good to go on that scene. Now we go into the kitchen. The kitchen is a, a video. Uh, it will automatically play for us. But we had one thing. We had a hot spot on here. So let's add it in. We've already added that, that star in the scenario, so we don't need to add it in again. It's right there. It's right there at the top. We've added in the star. Uh, and the only thing that's going to do is it's going to link to another scenario. So it's going to link to the electrical panel. And uh, there you go. And we'll put him right there, right on top of that. Uh, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go to that electrical panel. Uh, and in there, we're going to have the question come up. 
let's do something cool that wasn't even in there. Now that I think about it, we probably should do this. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, first we're gonna add the question. We're gonna add that question in, and oh, once again, here's that text thing, so Lord knows I'm not gonna type. I am gonna go in and I'm gonna do it. And the question is, what is the safety violation here? And uh, we're gonna say, the first one is this, there are no meaningful labels. And then we're gonna say, whoop, not all filled. And then we're gonna add some more choices because you can have as many choices as you want. And we're gonna go for our third choice. And our last choice. All right, so we've created a question here. We have the question. One of them is correct, so we're gonna set it as correct. And we're gonna do something on there. If they get it correct, we're gonna switch them back. We're gonna link back to the kitchen. So we're gonna link back to the kitchen. Okay, uh, so we've got that. And we've got that, we've got that question over there. And as you see, it remembered all the settings I just did in that text card and applied them here, but I can have it be all kinds of different settings if I wanted. I can set any different font or uh, look, look to it that I want. But let's, when we go in there, we actually saw there's a couple, there's two ways we can do this. We saw that the scene was pointing initially to here. So there's two things you can do. You can actually set the initial view of the scene so you can determine which way somebody's gonna be looking when they walk into the scene, or we can do that pan to and pan to an object. Pan to is kinda, kinda cool, so we're gonna go for the pan to. So you do that by setting an on show action on the scene. So all of those actions we just saw, you can do them when things show or hide as well. So you can do them on hotspots, you can do them when you're timed. You can also do them on show and on done for scenes. You can actually also do them on done for videos and audios. So if you add an audio, you can do something in an audio or a video, you can do it at the end of a video too. So what we're gonna do is on the show of the scene, we're going to uh, pan to, and we're gonna select that question. And so now when I go into that scene, it should pan to that question. So okay, in theory, this should work now, actually even a little bit better than that one we just watched. So let's give it a try. So here we have our explainer scene. We go in, we go into the front room. Yep, looks right. That was not showing, we said to not initially visible. We clicked on it, it shows. It should show for two seconds and then go away. Worked. We go into our kitchen, we walk into our kitchen, we see it, we go into here, we see it, and it auto pans over, you see it does a little pan over. We get, our, uh, we get our question, we say, there are no meaningful labels. If we answer it correctly, we switch back to the kitchen. So, as you can see, the, the, the title of this session is, what can you build in VR today? We just built that today. You can definitely build VR today. So, easy to get it out. So, when you build it, what can you do with it? Those are your published options. Uh, so what are your published options? So here is Scenario VR Live and Mobile that I talked about earlier. Uh, so that is when it is hosted on Scenario VR. We manage uh, the, the users. You put all your users in there. We manage assigning to users. We manage uh, uh, updates. So if you update it, it'll be updated on the user's devices. They'll, they'll have to re-download it. Uh, and we also store analytics for it. And we'll show XAPI analytics. Everything built in Scenario VR is natively XAPI without you doing anything. Everything is tracked via XAPI, and I'll show those analytics in a minute. But we have other options. We understand that it, the scenario of VR, may, you need to get VR, but it may not be the center of your universe. Maybe it needs to go somewhere else. We, we get it, we understand it. We have other methods of distributing. So you have the option of HTML, XAPI, CMI5, or different flavors of SCORM. When you publish to those, we actually create a zip file, a package file. That package file is actually downloadable. You can then put it anywhere. It is self-contained. It does not rely on us. If you uh, publish it out to XAPI, uh, you can actually uh, specify an LRS. It'll auto-report to that LRS. Uh, you actually can host it on any website anywhere, and it'll host the LRS. If you don't have a person's email built into it, it'll prompt for the email to identify it and report out to LRS all of the XAPI statements for it, uh, all built in. Uh, if you publish out to HTML5, just produces a web VR HTML5 package, runnable on your website. Uh, many people put it up for tours. You see it very often on city websites, uh, 
uh, attraction websites, they'll put up virtual tours. This is how you would do that. So lots of ways to create it uh, all right here. And the, the most, the, uh, almost unfortunately, the most popular publishing option to this day, we track what's being published, uh, is still SCORM to this day. A lot of people are publishing, putting on their LMS. You don't get any of the deep analytics, uh, things like that, but it does work. You can put it on your LMS today, and you do get some immersive content on your LMS. Okay, uh, so let's look at analytics for a moment. So uh, when you are uh, publishing, uh, when you're creating all this, uh, unbeknownst to you under the covers, when you create a published package, every piece has an XAPI hook uh, built into it. And so in that, we create uh, XAPI analytics based upon that. So we have a set of analytics for you that we keep for every single one of your things. And so this is our, it's a demo account, uh, but all of our demo content that we've been running all day, we keep analytics on it as things are going on. And this is the larger version of that small one we just built. This is the office safety one. Uh, and we keep analytics on those students. So we have the standard things that you would expect. It's a very graphical nature. We have the scores. We know who passed and who failed. Uh, and everything's clickable. You can go and get a log of all the statements. Everything's downloadable through CSV. You can download all of these things to your device. Uh, but we do a lot more than just scores and, and, and pass fail. Uh, we also keep a leaderboard. Uh, but the leaderboard doesn't necessarily have to be through score. A lot of times in VR, you're not scoring. You just want to see if they're using it, if they're learning it, how they interact with it. So you can get a leaderboard just based on interactions. How many interactions did they do within there? But you can also get that leaderboard based on score as well. So it's a different leaderboard based on score. We also have a full experience timeline. So this really shows the evidence that this is demo content because all the experiences were done in two days. <laughs> so, uh, but obviously it would look a little different for normal content out there. But you get a full uh, timeline log of everything that's up there. You can see what they did, in what order they did it, as they're going through as well. Again, everything is downloadable uh, and it'll be used. We then go through each scene. So in each scene, you have either questions or hotspots or a combination of both. This scenario just had scenes that had hotspots or questions. Uh, but you can go through and look at uh, each scene and then look at the hotspots. I'll try to look at one that has better. So you, get a, you can see who published it correctly, who, who answered it correctly, who answered it incorrectly, and get the list of people. If you click on there, you can actually delve into and get the list of people who answered it correctly and get those timestamps on there as well. So uh, very cool stuff. If you actually go through and uh, uh, look at some of these, you can see, okay, here are all the links that they took on there. When they're in this, had four different links. Who took those links? You know, you can find out when they took them, you know, what time they took them, what they were doing. Really get some interesting information on there as well. Then at the end, we have a full interaction log. So we log out for every student that went through there, what they did in one order, so you get the full interaction log. But then again, everything is drillable. So if I want to see, if I'm interested in student four, I can look at for this particular scenario, I can look at student four and I can see all of that same statistics just for that one student. So I can drill down into that one student and I can see where that student was on the leaderboard. And he wasn't very good on the leaderboard, by the way. All of his experiences, all of his interactions. But then if I want to see if I'm really interested in a student, I can look at him across all of the scenarios. So if I have assigned 10 scenarios to him, I can see how he did across all of those scenarios. And so I can see how many, how many he's launched. How many interactions he had? So which ones is he having more interactions with than others? And how he scored on it? Looks like he did pretty good. He passed all of these, not too bad. Here's where he is on the interactions leaderboard. So we break out interactions and score here and set them up separately so you can look at those individually on there. And his experience timeline. When did he do things? When was that student in there? You can look individually. And of course, all interactions for that student across all things. So we, we keep a, a, a really verbose log of all these things that you can slice and dice in a lot of ways. And of course, we allow you to download them so you can slice and dice them to your heart's content uh, in Excel as a CSV file. So lots of ways you can work with it. Uh, the last thing I'm going to go over is just uh, uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the dashboard interface. Uh, so we showed it before. We have the My Scenarios. I am an author. I see these My Scenarios. If I was a student, I would only have the My Scenarios. Uh, and it would be basically this tab, the Assigned Scenarios. Those are just the ones that are assigned to me. Uh, so, but even though I'm an author, I can have Assigned Scenarios. I don't believe this, this one has Assigned Scenarios. But I could be a student as well. I could have them assigned to me. And they would show up on this tab. I also have the concept of public scenarios, and these are ones you can check out yourselves. These are all things that are available to the public, and uh, both Trivantis and other uh, companies have gone out and actually published things publicly out there that can be used. 
So these are all ones that people have created and published publicly out there that you can check out. These are things you could actually publish them, host them on Scenario VR, and link to them from your website. You don't doesn't require a login, doesn't anything. It's public facing content. We also have the concept of shared scenarios. So shared scenarios, I think one of our sh scenarios was shared up here. Uh, shared scenarios, you see it's got the little sharing icon. That means this author has shared that with another author, and they're both able to work out at the same time. Now, caveat, not exactly at the same time. One can author it, he goes out, the other can author it, he goes out. But the two people can work on it together and in, in, in unison. Uh, so if it's shared, if it's not mine, I didn't create it, and then someone has shared it with me, it would show up in shared scenarios. We also have the concept of users and groups as well. Uh, so you, this is how you assign things to people. You add them as users. You can batch add them from a, a, a comma separated file as well. So you can just create a new user or you can batch import a user. You can add those in. When you add them in, each of those users gets sent an email. They then activate their account. You assign them scenarios. When you go through and assign them scenarios, those are automatically added to their assigned scenarios page and they get them. If they are viewing those devices on a, on a phone, we have apps for both iOS and Android that they, they can use it in, they can use it on the phone, either in VR or not. Uh, believe it or not, a phone is actually a pretty uh, valid device to use even in not in VR. It uses the accelerometer on the phone. So as you're moving around, it moves the scene on the phone. And you still select with your finger. Or you can go into VR mode, there's a little goggles icon. You tap that, it goes into VR mode, you can put it in a cardboard and use it there as well. If they have like an Oculus Go or a Samsung Gear VR or even an Oculus Rift, we have apps for those as well. Those are we have uh, apps. Those apps work in the same way as the phone apps. Uh, if they're assigned, they log into it with their ID. Their assigned scenarios go there. They can then actually uh, go through, download the device. They run locally on the device. So once they're on the device, you don't have to worry about bandwidth. These things are usually pretty bandwidth intensive. Uh, so it's nice that the apps allow you to download it to the device and run it locally on the device. Uh, the lastly, we have groups, and that just makes it easier to assign things. So create a group of four people, assign it to the group. Boom, everybody gets it. You don't have to worry about it. So just an easy way to work with and assign groups of users. All right, and I finished three minutes early. Timed that pretty well. So I have time for three minutes of questions if you guys have any questions. Anything, uh, quick thing to think of? Hey, Adam. Hey, yes. You are definitely going to have to speak up. Or, hold on, you have a microphone coming your way. Here we go. OK. Um, once upon a time, I haven't used it in a while, but I found after I had it on for a while that it was kind of... Nauseating. All my senses were out of whack a little bit if I used it too much. So there's, there's several things, and I, I referred to it earlier. It depends on the content, how it's made. Uh, so we never, we recommend never, and I could actually give a whole presentation on that, all the things to do and how to create VR. Uh, camera movement, so if the camera ever moves, it's like the roller coaster effect. You get instant nauseous. Things should never be, hot spots should never be straight down or straight up. Uh, it makes you nauseous almost immediately. And if things are longer than five or 10 minutes, some people will become nauseous, some people won't. So this, VR is micro-learning in action. Everything should be short clips, five to 10 minutes long. If you have them on for long periods of time, not everyone, it doesn't bother me, but some people do get bothered, even with static material that, that does everything right. If they're in for too long, the virtual world takes over and they get, they get a little nauseous, so. You, you can do it without the gut. You can do it just. Yeah, you can do it. You can do it on the web. You can yeah. You can do it on the web, and you can do it on the phone without the goggles. And that is somewhat immersive. It's not as immersive, but it is a good way to do it. Absolutely. Okay. If it's something you'd really like to see, then you put on the goggles. But if it's something you don't want to be so much involved in, you can just watch it on the screen. Yep. Absolutely. And it's. Uh, just to, to elaborate on that a bit more, it's also an excellent way to roll out to a group, a larger group. You can roll that out in stages. You can, you can roll out part on the web for some of your users. So if you have a large bulk of users, they can take it on the web. Some people can take it in cardboard. Some people can take it like in the Oculus Go, a more advanced user. So, and you only have to publish once to hit all of those users. Depends on what the device they're on, they can use it in each way. Yes. Hello. Uh, few questions. Uh, one, does it? Can I uh, load and uh, say like a PNG sequence with transparency and throw it in there? A, a, an animated PNG? No, yes. we do not support animated PNGs. Well, you can put an MP4 video in there that describes what you're trying to do, uh, and and that will work. Uh, but not an animated PNG. No. Yeah, I mean, because basically I'm interested in image sequences that have transparency. You know, instead of having to, you know 
do another footage and After Effects or something, I just like drop it in there. That's why. So something like a green screen video might work for you too, as well, though, right? I mean, if if if, if the engine supports it, I mean, because like you can export into an MOV with built-in transparency, but would it support that? Would that support so this? Would this support the, that? The current version does not support green screen, but MOVs aren't supported generally across the web, so it wouldn't be MOVs. But yeah. if you green screen a video, we actually have in test and prototype right now green screen support for MP4 videos. So we would auto green screen it for you. Okay. Now, the other thing, you know, those hotspots, can you like, because I noticed they came with like built in animation and stuff. And can we like, can I like change that completely? Say, make my own graphic and make oh, a custom animation and turn it to a hotspot? All your own graphics. So, yeah, the hotspots, we, we give you some, but you can put all your own uh, graphics in for everything. It's all your own graphics. Uh, we expect you to put in. Uh, the animations are stock animations. We're actually changing them. That's, that's the animation you see. We've actually already changed it. It just hasn't come out yet. But we're, we're changing the animations and look for, in the near future, having the ability to animate anything in a variety of ways. So we're going to give you the ability to spin things on random at different times and all that. That's all coming. Um, okay, what about, like, I, I saw some of, like, um, you know, kind of like the multiple choice stuff. And I noticed, you know, it was like a very simple square with whatever. Say that I wanted that square to kind of like disintegrate into particles, you know, um, would that be pop? Well, I mean, you already said that you don't support PNG sequences, so that's kind of the only way I could think. But you, you can do, do things, that. what you do, uh, and, and people, we, we try to keep the interface as simple as possible. But imagine you wanted a, a scene where you wanted to pick something up and, and they had to place it in a certain spot, right? So what you would do is you'd have them go and you'd select it, and when they select it, it disappears and it shows up on their hip, and you show it to the hip. And they, they turn to the place you're supposed to put it, and you select it, and then you show it over there. Those are so it, you simulate those kind of things by showing and hiding and moving and allowing them to select different areas on the screen. So is that kind of what you're referring to there, or more like really customizing? You know that you know because that was that seemed like it, it looked like a multiple choice thing. Because right. like it, in our courses, you know. Everything's like super custom. We don't use anything out of the. So you build box, your own. So, yeah. Using hotspots, images, things like that. You can build your own questions and okay. then set your score based upon that. And then that could be, a, you know, by setting the score, it is a SCORM. It is the real score of the course. So. Oh, and my last question: Does it support 180 video or just 360? Just 360. Mm, okay. Thanks. The 180 video is 360 with black in the back, by the way. So yeah. No, no, yeah. <laughs> that, that's kind of the thing because I mean I. Took right. another session. I guess 180 was a little bit more uh, right. successful, you know, keeping you know people where you want them to stay. So right. that's why. And, and they're going to kick me off stage now, so oh, I'll, okay. I can take questions over. 116, booth 116. So come on over. Any more questions? Thank you. Round of applause.